Right. My name is Benjamin Evans. Um, uh, I am taking Math 12 this uh, 2021 uh, spring semester. Um, I am in Section 24D and I'm in Subsection Y and t my topic is Mathematics and Music. So continuing on, um, Pythagoras, here let me adjust this little image real quick. Um, so Pythagoras is the father of numbers and harmony. Pythagoras was an ancient Greek philosopher who was keen in the understanding of modern day music. Um, Pythagoras discovered the relationship between both vibrations and pitch and realized that if you could manipulate the length and overall size of a string, that you could change the sound. Um, Pythagoras is also known for his discoveries in math such as the Pythagorean theorem, obviously, and I know everybody knows that. So continuing on, Pythagoras was able to identify a crucial relationship between different musical tones and pitches that were played uh, that when played together complement each other. This relationship is known as a harmony. After discovering this connection, Pythagoras also noted that by a staggering two to one ratio, specific tones exactly eight tones apart would complement each other uh, when played in unison. This is what is known today as an octave. Octave ap octaves appear in all genres of music from percussion to strings. In music, there is also uh, something known as perfect a perfect fifth. This is when an instrument is tuned to a perfect three to two ratio, uh, which is also seven semitones apart from one another. How does this come into play? The piano has 88 notes. The piano also has seven different octaves. Uh, a piano has 12 different fifths. Um, the frequency of a piano starts from the very left key uh, from 27 hertz, so like a really low uh, sound. Um, all the way to the furthest right key to 4,186 hertz. This instrument has many different patterns that can be mathematically linked to several mathematical equations. One of these is known as the Pythagorean comma, which will be explained in the next slide. The frequency of the perfect fifth follows a um, 2 to the, 12th, uh, to the 12th root to the 7th power ratio. Um, a few concepts to better understand these uh, this whole material. Uh, to better understand these concepts, we must first look at the Pythagorean fifth circle. The, Pythagor the Pythagorean fifth circle, which is displayed on the left, highlights all major and minor keys on the piano with the respective harmonious equivalents side by side. By sticking to the rule of fifths, if the keys begin increasing by a fifth in a clockwise direction, then the resulting number will be eventually uh, 129.7463. However, when rotating in a counterclockwise uh, position um, or way, uh, when you count the octaves, you are then going to end up getting 128 instead of 129.7463. This is just a mere example of how, although harmonious, these numbers are not exactly equivalent. Uh, this concept is known as the Pythagorean comma. And again, just to highlight, right here we have the major C key and uh, A minor. And these are technically uh, and harmonious since they're right here next to each other on, on the Pythagorean fifth circle. However, as you are soon going to see, there obviously is a deviation as these numbers are not the same even though they're equivalent um, and harmonically. So right here, here's the work for the last calculations. So for the fifths, we have to a 3 to 2 ratio to the 12th power. This is due to the fact that if you count these numbers again, there is 12 around. So we're going to be going by a fifth in the right direction. Um, and that's how you end up getting 129.7463 hertz. Um, and for the um, octaves, you go in a counterclockwise uh, position, and instead of counting each um, each flat and sharp note around all 12, you're gonna instead use the seven octaves because that's the max that are on a piano. So by doing that, you end up going using the two to one ratio. You end up getting 128 uh, hertz. Obviously, there's a little tiny deviation right here which doesn't make it inharmonically equivalent, although it sounds like it is. So it's a little confusing, but I'll explain the significance of that in this slide. So significance of the Pythagorean comma, why should I care? The Pythagorean comma is important as it is a key point for all tuning measurements for frequencies of different instruments. In order to compose and or write in harmonically fluid music, one must know the limitations of the 12 perfect fifths of an instrument, therefore have a decent understanding of the Pythagorean comma. When it comes to tuning an instrument by ear, it becomes difficult to uh, differentiate the gap in equivalence by exactly 1.7463 hertz, which is the deviation uh, between those two numbers. However, it should always be kept into consideration that this is a factor that will allow for an instrument to be properly tuned. Um, at the end of the day, this also means that an instrument could 
also be never tuned exactly the same as previously done before due to this deviation of 1.7463 Hertz. And when it's referring to that, it's referring to this little gap right here in the image. Um, yeah, obviously I wrote like notice the furthest point is not touching. All of these are harmoniously equivalent. And if we go back to the graph, that would be major C, minor A, equivalent, 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 except for F sharp and uh, A major. Those are uh, supposedly inharmonically equivalent but technically have a deviation that will never be the same and that's what Pythagoras discovered and to this day we still use that information that he um, found himself to know that there is an, uh, a slight gap there so what I mean by uh, the, this deviation will always stay true is that although if somebody's really good at tuning um, like a composer or an artist or whatever you might not always get it uh, correct when you're tuning these keys right here because of the deviation. It might sound like similar, but it'll never be the same as previously done before. And again, these are my references and citations for this, um, showing the importance of Pythagoras' work and where it stands today in the modern day era. Again, thank you for your time so much, and I hope you enjoyed my project.